Elden Ring certainly did a lot of things right. Today we're going to have a look at some of the best aspects in Elden Ring in no particular order and talk about what makes them so damn good. Now without further ado, here are the best things Elden Ring got right. Souls games have always been good at world building, but Elden Ring takes it a step further with the introduction of the open world. Despite it being huge, it never sacrifices that with a lack of detail, and those details craft this fantastic fantasy world, filling it with secrets that are never explained and some that rely on the player having knowledge of the lore surrounding the world. There's things everywhere. Look at that giant skull. That must be from the War of the Giants. Look how massive they were. Look at this secret demigod hidden behind the beaten path. Look at this tree. Check out this dog. Elden Ring follows your basic environment type. You've got the forest, the magic swamp, the less magic death swamp, desert of death, mountains, lava, snow, environment. And all of these are portrayed beautifully. Recently, I tweeted about how you know in Dark Souls 3 when you first get to the Boreal Valley and you're taken back and you say, oh, Wow, that's impressive. Elden Ring is like that, but every 15 minutes. Part of the frustration in Souls games when dying to a boss is the run back to that encounter. This ended up being one of the major factors in how the difficulty was perceived in Dark Souls. Die to a boss? Well, now you have to fight through all the enemies over and over again just to get back to that boss. But the reality was, when you die to the boss, you just run back there, avoid everything. Still an arduous task, but Elden Ring took that a step further and added these beauties. Nine times out of ten, after failing a boss encounter, you'll get the option to spawn right by the entrance, thus allowing you to die to the boss even quicker than you normally would if you had to run there. You could argue that this makes the game easier, but I'd argue not having them in doesn't affect difficulty at all. Not having them in just makes the process of getting back to where you were longer. Because as we mentioned, it's not like you fought every enemy back to the boss entrance, and there's only a few instances where the run back was actually hard. Ashes of War are great. Their weapon arts 2.0. The best thing about them is for standard weapons, you can choose which Ash of War you want on that weapon. Unlike in Dark Souls 3 where you were stuck with just one. And this opens up an array of different options where you can make a build that's unique to you. Want to be a hard-fought knight with a giant hammer that can never falter? Strong. Or a dark assassin that hurls strains of blood at their enemies before making them bleed? Super scary. Or a strong, noble paladin warrior of the light who can call upon the heavens to cast lightning at their enemies? Religion. Or this guy. I think this actually opens up a lot of potential for DLC as well adding new Ashes of War into future DLCs that can be used on various weapon types just adds more potential for interesting stuff to do with our player character's equipment. The lore and story in this game, as with any Dark Souls, is so interesting. You're always seeing the aftermath of something important that's happened, or you're being told about factions and their intentions, with how the lands between is portrayed, you're rewarded even further by exploring the areas, finding cool small details and then putting your own twist and thoughts on how the story comes together is something I just love doing. I'm currently going through the game again and every time an important character comes up, I'm doing a deep dive on their story. The convoluted Marika family tree, the use of Scarlet Rot in the battle between Melania and Radan. Okay, now hear me out. There's so many references to Dark Souls in Elden Ring, and there's always been references in Souls games to previous titles, but Elden Ring seems to do them really well, and I am convinced they are a part of the same universe. Now, I know George R.R. Martin said that this was a sequel to Dark Souls, and everyone was kind of like, yeah, okay, but I found myself getting excited whenever something came up even down to the purpose of the Erd Tree and what it means. The story is even vaguely reminiscent of Dark Souls 2 with giants and lords. But not only that, we've got Irina, Castle Morn, Castle Gale, Artorius's Flip, Sif, 
Patch is looking exactly like how he does in Dark Souls. There's enemies that share models and animations from Souls games. I said this during my first playthrough of the game. The lands between almost feels like a limbo, like the place souls go. And this is my crazy lore theory that I've just thought of right now. You know in Dark Souls 2's opening cinematic, the one where the undead falls into the whirlpool and then they end up in Dren Lake? What if that whirlpool was in the center here? All the divine towers line up to this area hidden by the clouds. And on that note, I'm gonna remove my tinfoil hat right now. There's so many interesting builds that you can do. But Paragon, I hear you cry. There's no build variation. People just go magic and win super easy, or people just use whatever weapon is overpowered on the current patch. Well, yes, that will always be true. But just because magic laser go pew pew big damage doesn't mean I can't go something else if I want to. There's a bunch of interesting, unique weapons that you can use. There's around 310 weapons in this game, compared to the 200 that were in Dark Souls 3. There's different combinations of stats, do dex faith, strength arcane, intelligence strength. There's a ton of spells in the game, that with the addition of Ashes of War, you can really put something together that's truly unique. Previously in Dark Souls, you are always bound somewhat regarding weapon choices and your build. But in Elden Ring, it really has opened the floodgates for potential. We recently hosted a Fight Club tournament with 10 people, and there wasn't a single repeat of a weapon. There's lots of things that are good. Yes, there's lots of things that are a bit too good. But even though it is difficult not to use what the best weapons or spells are, you can do it, and I implore you to try out new things and experiment. I fell down this rabbit hole on my first playthrough of finding cool weapons and then changing my entire build because it just seemed neat. Elden Ring does that so many times. You find something new and you want to use that because in the back of your mind you have where you want to take your character and then you finally find something that clicks instantly only for you to find out it sucks. So these are five things that shine in Elden Ring and it feels so good to be gleefully enjoying the game. Let me know some of the things that you like about the game and we'll have a good old circle jerk down in the comments below. Remember to join the Discord. We're getting a lot of new members recently and we're building an awesome community now and it's so lovely to see. I've been Paragon. Take care, be good to one another, and I'll see you next time.